Looking to take your sports knowledge to the next level? Just a fan of wrestling and entertainment? You're in the right place. Welcome to The Show with your hosts, Hollywood JDT and Stuntman Kirk. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. We are here with Emmy Lap. <laughs> <laughs> I caught myself on a team. Okay. <laughs> with Emmy Raver Lappin. There we go. Sorry about you that. No, all good. <laughs> How you doing today? I'm doing so good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for taking this time to sit down with us. Absolutely. Um, Stuntman, you want to start off? Yeah. So, um, You've done these conventions before, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and is this your first time in Denver? It's my third time in Denver. Third actually, time in Denver. Yeah. So, what is it about these conventions, whether it be Comic Con or something like this, that you, I guess, like or enjoy, or that you yeah. want to keep coming to? I think it's it's a room, a giant room, full of love and full of um, just like free spirits and people and people, you know, not afraid to to be themselves and 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 let their imagination fly and, and you know, getting to meet people that they idolize and, and actors that they look up to and, and people's work that they respect and admire and, you know, it like closes the gap on, you know, so, you know, sitting on your couch watching a thing or sitting in a movie theater watching a thing and like actually being able to have a conversation with, with these, you know, these actors and these people that are playing these superheroes that you love <laughs> and, and, and whatever, whatever it is that you're, coming to the convention to, to see and witness and experience and, and get autographed or whatever, you know, I think it's just the community of the Comic-Con world is one I've never experienced before and it's just, everyone's so lovely and so open and so happy to be here and so excited and the cosplay is incredible and, you know, people spend hours and hours and weeks on these costumes and they just, they, they look amazing, so I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Nice. I noticed that walking through today. This is the first time I've been to the Denver yeah, yeah, me too, um, yeah. one, and it was seeing just some of the costumes along. We've been to the Springs in the past, but like coming yeah. through here was like holy cow. Yeah, like, I know, I know. The work that goes into some it's of that unreal. is just real. I just have never, you know, and it, a lot of people are, you know, have never touched a sewing machine before, but they're like, I'm gonna figure this out because it is so worth it, and I need to make this costume. And it's been hours. Just, the glue and the glitter and the fabrics and the it's it's really really cool I'm, I'm, and the props it's not only just costumes people make like oh, full yeah. <laughs> the weaponry and it's it's really crazy yeah so let's talk um the umbrella academy yes let's do it and i, I hadn't seen the show with netflix and um i sat down and started watching it and i, and I, I messaged something and I told him like hey dude i i almost watched every episode now yeah. in, within two days yeah. um it, it's an awesome show thank and, you um I, I fell for it right off the bat like it just got into it your character in there mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. play the the movie star yeah that can make people kind of read your mind or do what you're telling them to yeah, do yeah, mind. yeah um how has how is that show how is it being on, on, just a part of the umbrella academy and it's it's been an amazing experience unlike anything i have ever done and anything i could have expected I am um, you know between being able to be a superhero and then being able to work with this unbelievable cast um, that's just like the best of two amazing things and I think this the show is written so well and Steve Blackman our showrunner and the writers in our writers room and and our producers and Netflix has been unbelievable and universal and we've just it's a really it really is a family and it's not just the actors on the screen it's everyone involved we all you know what one of our producers assistants is like now one of my best friends like we all like we all get along and love each other and Tom and Ellen and I are all really good friends and Robert and what you see on what you see on the screen is really is really what's happening off camera that it's just a really amazing group of people and we all love spending time together and and I actually leave I'm not I'm going to be here on Sunday because I have to fly back to Toronto to start shooting the second season. So we're all, we start next week. So we're all really excited to just hang out and see each other again and dive deeper and do more and, and see what's next for these crazy characters. So what do you put into your character? Like, mm -hmm. like I guess from like the, the personal level, like yeah. what do you kind of... Yeah. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah. How did I, I, that's the way to kind of word that, I guess. I think um, what I like bring most to Allison, that's yeah. most like myself. Yeah. 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 I, I think... Allison is really loyal and I think the relationships that she has are really important to her and I think she goes to extreme lengths to preserve them and, and try to, um, you know, try to keep pe the people that are important to her in her life and I think that is something that I'm, 
I am a very loyal friend. If you're, if I am your friend and you are my friend, you're stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds What's well, a good thing now? <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, I, I I get really really selfless when it comes to my friends, and I'll do anything for them. And, and I think that is definitely a, like a parallel that I see with Allison, and something that I just admire so much about that character. And um, so yeah, I think that was initially the first thing that I kind of latched onto. And then you know, her, she's got this ridiculous inner strength and and kind of this like worldly wisdom. And um, I think that is the thing that I'm trying to pull into my own life from her and, and take from her and, and kind of find the happy medium for the for the both of us <laughs> yeah <laughs> so was there a casting process that you had to go through or did they just call the agent hey we want we i want. wish <laughs> Here. um well no i i had an, an initial audition and then like honestly like five months went by and i heard nothing okay and then out of the blue i got a call and they were like hey remember that thing you auditioned for that we thought you didn't get five months ago <laughs> they they ascend they want to test you which essentially is like a callback um which means you know a, a, when you're doing like when you're being tested for a role it means it's down it's between like you and a very small handful sure. of people um and like even before you audition you like go in and like negotiate your contract so that when you do get the part there's not any like oh you like me that much pay me seven million dollars an episode <laughs> it's like no we like you and you're lucky for us your contract's already been figured out so you got the job great um so i they tested me and and then i ended up getting getting the part so i just had an audition and essentially a callback oh perfect yeah, okay and then, yeah but it was an audition and then five months later a callback <laughs> and then you know a day after that I so you've pretty much forgotten almost oh, completely well, about it she <laughs> called me and was like hey like you have a test for this that that Netflix superhero show and I was like what what show I like truly had you know because part of there's so much rejection in being an actor and you have to get used to no and not getting things and like getting really attached to a thing sure. and not working out and so you know I think when you audition for something and either you you get they're moving on it's not it's not yours or you just don't hear anything yeah you get really good at just forgetting about things because if you if you hold on to things too much it just it's too much there's yeah, you'd get you wouldn't audition for anything ever again oh you know sure I mean? you no have to i get like you. let things go you have to like woosa and keep it moving so i definitely just you know moved on from it and, and was like you know had, was not even thinking about it at all I hadn't even thought about it in months and it came out of nowhere so that's also you know but that's also how Hollywood works. It's like you audition for a thing and then like it loses funding and then it doesn't happen and then three <laughs> years later it comes back and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> so I think, you know, so it's like you never know when it's gonna, and then sometimes it's immediate. Sometimes you audition and in the room before you even leave, they're like, it's yours. So you never, it's a toss up. You never know what you're gonna get. Well, it worked out for you this yeah, time. Yeah, I'm truly thrilled. <laughs> so you've done a few fight scenes yes. in the show. Is it, was it you doing the yeah. fight scene? Yeah, yep. I, really really wanted to do all my own stunts as long as as much as the production would consider safe for me to do and um you know i think driving a burning car would probably not be the thing that i would do <laughs> that hasn't happened so like luckily i've been able to do all my own stunts but um yeah we have an unbelievable fight coordinator and stunt coordinator on set in toronto and um you know i've i've we we go back to show uh, shooting in two weeks and a month ago I started training in LA already so I really I love it but I also love you know I'm coming from musical theater you spend four months training for a thing and practicing and rehearsing it and then and then eventually it gets up on its feet and so I think fight training for me has kind of been the rehearsal process it's a very similar and stunt choreography and fight choreography is really a lot like dancing it's like you have a part you have a scene partner and there's like a give and a take and you take a step here and then i take a step here and then i throw a right hook and then you dodge it this way it's very it's fight cord like fight choreography and dance like partner dancing are very similar so i think it fundamentally it makes sense in my head so i really <laughs> enjoy it yeah and you've done a lot of broadway uh-huh um, yeah and kind of took off your career from there yeah 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 really with it where where are you at with that? Is there any is there any new stuff coming up with them? No, I kind of um, this is Umbrella's really been the focus, and I um, when I did the national tour of Hamilton in San Francisco for six months, and then Los Angeles for six months, I moved to LA, and I knowing that when my contract was up with Hamilton, I kind of was actively making the choice to stay in LA and kind of you know I had been doing New York and I had been doing theater in New York for almost ten years, and so I was you know, ready to, to try something new and mix it up and, and, and be scared again and be 
you know, try some, like, go into some uncharted territory. And um, so I think TV and film was something I think I never thought I would be able to do. And then I think, you know, being in LA doing Hamilton, I was like, you know, I think this, I love this city. I've always wanted to live in, in LA. My dad's from Los Angeles. And so I, I have had this like pull to just like be in LA and see what happens. And, and I started auditioning and, you know. It's worked and out then, well. And then, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I think um, I'm, it's, yeah. So any other projects kind of on the works or anything you kind of have coming besides um, just season two? Uh, I ha So I did a couple episodes of Jane the Virgin um, that are coming out this this in this final season towards the end so I've got um, a couple scenes with Gina Rodriguez which are pretty great she's incredible it was really like a true true honor to work with her she's incredible um, and then I did an indie not too long after we wrapped um, the first season of Umbrella I did a, an indie that was written directed starred and produced by my friend Jay Lee um, and that's kind of we just had like a friends and family screening this week and it's so so good it's so funny it's so cute it's like a buddy comedy between this guy and this like 10 year old and <laughs> again they meet every it's called Wednesdays and they meet because every Wednesday they both go to therapy so they meet in like on the couch of the therapist's office and then like become friends and and then you know take off on this crazy journey together um, so it's really it's a really cute movie. So that I think he, I think Jaylee wants to do um, like the festival circuit. So so hopefully that'll be out and about and kicking around in a year or so. And yeah, but then other than that, it's the next seven months. I'm pretty locked down to do Umbrella. So I'll I'll resurface for something else in January next year. <laughs> well, it's a good thing this is happening now. So you had a little yeah. bit of a break here. So um, sure. as far as the pop culture con here. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess for fans of Umbrella Academy, yeah. uh, anything, any hints you want to give them of anything upcoming that they want to be prepared for? I the second season is going to be insane, <laughs> and I think truly it is because the fans of this show, like over 60 million people watch this show. Sure. And, and still, it's still growing. Like it's still, the numbers I think are still rolling in. And, and that was one of Netflix's insane. like hugest, biggest first show yeah, when it came ever. out like just massive ever. under turn off And of that. I think because of that, it kind of opened this door for us and our, our showrunner and the writer's room and our producers to kind of really like, oh great. So then we're just gonna go ahead and take it to the next level. And sure. so I think, the first two episodes are insane. The first 10 minutes of the first episode of the second <laughs> season is nuts. It's nuts. So I, I just, I'm, I'm really excited. And because, you know, at the end of season one, it's like, where did they go? When did they go? How old are they all going to be? Sure. Who's going to be there? Are they all going to be together? Are they going to be apart? Like, what's, are they dead? Do they die? What Do they lose their powers? Do they keep their powers? What, who knows? So I think there's, they are really diving into every possible crazy left turn in the road that you could take. Yeah. Perfect. So I think awesome. it's going to be bigger and better. Bigger and better is what everyone's been saying. <laughs> and I think it's already our show. We haven't even started and our showrunner is like, I'm already exhausted. <laughs> so it's going to be, it's going to be nuts. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. Amy, thank you for taking of this course. time to sit down with thanks us. Thanks for hanging and, out. Yeah. Um, we look forward to watching season two. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. And thanks for doing this. We much appreciate it. Absolutely. So. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Show with Hollywood JDT and Stuntman Kirk. Want to stay in the know on all things sports, wrestling, movies, and TV? Follow the show on social media at The Show Podcast. If you like today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on The Show. This has been a Phonetics production.